of illusion. How quantum physics questions our perception of reality. Anton Zeilinger, University of Vienna and Austrian Academy of Sciences. On November the 9th, 1989, I was in Innsbruck, Austria. So it is a great pleasure and honor to be here and to be the first speaker. I hope you agree with me afterwards, after my presentation. Being here reminds me of the fact that I was here in Berlin for the first time just 50 years ago, which was 1964, two years after the wall was built and one year after my abitur or matura, now you know how old I am. And uh, this was a very deep experience for me because we were able to cross the border easily. We went across Checkpoint Charlie and I made friends with people of my age in East Berlin. And uh, we actually smuggled uh, records for them across the border in our back. But just to see the, the, the emotional impact of the wall was enormous for me as a young person. And when we talk about illusion, First, it comes to mind when we talk about the wall, that uh, the Berlin Wall, that just shortly before the wall came down, the leadership of, the, uh, uh, of East Germany celebrated 40 years of DDR, and they had the illusion that this will be something which stands forever. Why did I choose breaking the wall of illusion for my short presentation? because this is what science is all about. In science, we broke down many illusions over history. One of the illusions was that the Earth is flat. Another illusion was that the Earth is at the center, we are at the center of the universe. Another illusion was that we are biologically special and different from other animals and living beings. Another illusion which was broken down was by Albert Einstein in his relativity theory that uh, space and time are something absolute. And in quantum mechanics, we broke down many illusions about reality. One of the illusions about reality which was broken down in quantum mechanics is that an object can only be at a given place at a given time. There have been many experiments about that. One of the experiments was done by Jürgen Mlinek, many years ago, the so-called double slit experiment with atoms, which shows that atoms can go to two slits at the same time. Now, becoming a little bit more specific, I want to uh, give you a little impression of quanta, something immediately. What I have here is a little device, we, we call it photon clicker, uh, which registers photons. In this individual particles of light. I should say that everything consists of quanta. Uh, light consists of particles which are photons and they are produced here by the lamps and so on. And what you hear here are clicks of individual photons. These are individual quanta, individual uh, particles of light. And you get the feeling, I could argue now for a long time, that this is something random, something you know, not very regular, which happens. And randomness is actually a very deep notion in quantum mechanics. Einstein is known for having said that uh, he, in the letter 1926, I think, to Max Born, where he said, I cannot believe that God plays dice with the universe. By that he meant that for every event, every individual event happening, there must be a cause, there must be a causal explanation. And this is something which is not true for the individual quantum event anymore. In general, uh, which photon arrives at the detector here and makes a click is random beyond our ignorance. It's not just our ignorance. To tell you a little bit about randomness, I brought here the quintessential uh, example of randomness, which are dice. Würfel. You know, and if you throw a die, like here, I throw a die, it shows three, for example. 
Now, this is random, but it is classically random. It is not quantum randomness. It's random in the following sense that the motion of the die is so complicated uh, that we cannot describe it completely. We cannot really calculate completely. But, but classical physics would tell us if you know everything about the system, we would be able to, uh, to explain why, in this case, the three showed up on the top. Well, maybe I do it the other way around so you see it better. The one showed up in, in front so you can see it, okay? Uh, if these were quantum dice, the one should, would still sh uh, show up, but there would be no explanation for the individual throw of the die, not even an explanation unknown to us. This is one of the messages of quantum physics. So randomness is, is a, a, a concept I would like you to carry home, and it's called objective randomness. Heisenberg, who became famous for the Heisenberg uncertainty relations, talked about objective randomness versus subjective randomness. This randomness is subjective. It's because we don't know everything that goes on. But God, so to speak, would know. Objective randomness is something that is not only our subjective ignorance, nobody knows. This was the first message. The second message, if I had two dice, and if I throw the second one here, if I throw the second one, it shows any number which is not related to the first one. These two events are completely independent. The point is now, in quantum mechanics, we, we, we have a situation where two events, two elements, uh, two systems can be correlated in a way which is called entanglement, in German, Verschränkung, which actually is a better word than entanglement. Verschränkung means some very well-defined connection. Entanglement is spaghetti, but never mind. <laughs> uh, entanglement means the following situation. If these were in quantum entangled dice, maybe the camera wants to show, uh, I have to manipulate a little bit. If these were quantum entangled dice, what would happen is, Whenever I throw uh, each of them, it produces a completely random result. But if I throw the other one, if they are quantum entangled, it would produce the same result. The identically same result. So whenever one shows one, the other one shows two. Uh, so shows one, when I show two, two, if it shows two and two, three and three, and so on. And independent how far these two quantum entangled dice are separated from each other. Now this is, as, as Erwin Schrödinger, uh, Austrian, uh, one of the founders of quantum mechanics and Nobel Prize winner for his wave mechanics, said this is one of the real mysteries of quantum mechanics. How can it be that two random processes, which are random in a way, that we know that there is no hidden cause why this one shows you the three, and there's no cause why this one sho shows you the three, show the same over arbitrary distances. And, uh, uh, in, in a, a friend of mine, Abner Shimoni at Boston University, who is a philosopher and physicist, says that there are only two possible messages. Either our ideas of reality are wrong in a very deep way, or our concept of space and time are wrong in a very deep way. So this is the second message, entanglement. The third message I want to bring home is the uh, message of superposition. What is the state of these quantum dice before I look at them? The state is that they, can, that they are in a superposition of both showing one both showing two, both showing three, both showing four. So they have all these properties in a sense at the same time. And only the, the observation finally brings about randomly one of these results. This superposition, this possibility of having many properties, uh, 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 of a system having many properties at the same time is characteristic of quantum mechanics, and that is what is new in that field. 
And that's also the cause why uh, Jürgen Blinek's experiment worked with the two-slit interference. Now, the whole thing can, by the way, be continued. You can have it with three, four, five, six, seven dies. It doesn't matter. You will always get the same kind of... Uh, you can have for three, you can have three which show the same result, four, and so on and so on, over arbitrary distances. Now, what is this good for? It is modern. It has become modern to ask always, what is it good for what you are doing? I think this is interesting enough, and this is good for just <laughs> curiosity. Right? But still, we have been doing such experiments over now, uh, I would say, uh, 30, 40 years. And in the beginning, when we, I mean me, meaning the, the humanity, human community, started these experiments, nobody had any idea of a possible application. This was just out of curiosity, no more than that. And to all of our surprise, it turned out that these notions, randomness, entanglement and superposition can be put to work. Can be put to work in developing a new kind of information technology. We talk about quantum information, which in my eyes, I'm really convinced of that, will someday supersede present information technology. We talk about quantum computers, which are based on superpositions and entanglement, just the way I, 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 I was trying to show you here. Uh, quantum computer lives of the fact that you, we are now certainly not talking about dyes, but we talk about atoms or photons or superconducting circuits or uh, so-called quantum dots, which are small semiconducting uh, uh, elements and so on put into this kind of superposition and entanglement, and you can imagine, because of this superposition, because of the fact that the system carries many different kinds of information at the same time, a, a quantum computer would operate in a completely different framework than a classical computer. Quantum computers would not just be the same thing faster, but it's a completely new concept. And my feeling, there are some algorithms which would work uh, much faster with quantum computers. I think this is just the beginning of the ideas. I would say, like in many other technologies, we don't have an idea yet what this be, will be really useful for, but it will be extremely useful. I'm convinced of that. And it will happen. Why do I dare to say that it will happen? Because there is no fundamental reason which speaks against it. There are many, many challenge, challenges but I expect the next generation of young people and the next after next to have bright ideas and all this can be overcome. So quantum computation is one case in point. The other one is quantum communication. And I would like to have my only slide in this presentation now, please. Yes. What you see here uh, is not a quantum picture in the uh, first. It's a, it's a telescope which stands on the Canary Island of Tenerife. And we go there, we do the experiments, not for the reasons you think. <laughs> we go there because on the islands of Tenerife and, and La Palma, you have clusters of telescopes which are together called the European Northern Observatory. And these two islands are separated by 150 kilometers. And, and what you see here is a laser beam going from from uh, Tenerife, this is the station, over to La Palma, which is just a guiding beam. It is not really the quantum uh, link. And we do quantum communication. So we send individual quantum particles across the distance to prove that communication with individual particles is possible, which is the ultimate limit. Now, now you communicate in glass fibers with many, with light. But this contains many photons, many particles. The ultimate limit is to have one particle per bit. And that is the goal, in a sense. And why is that the goal? Not only to save energy, which is not the reason, but because that promises secure communication, which is secure, whose security is, is, is uh, uh, guaranteed by the laws of quantum mechanics, by the laws of nature, and not because of some tricky uh, uh, proceedings. 
another application of this quantum communication will be to teleport, quantum teleportation, uh, beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> Beaming will not be a means of transportation, but it will be a means of communication between different quantum computers worldwide. And the goal we are working on right now, together with the Chinese Academy of Sciences, to put satellites into orbit to provide worldwide quantum communication. And these kind of experiments demonstrate that this is, this <coughs> is in, in principle possible. Now I expect my friend Klaus Franz, right? to come up, I, he, I, he has, <laughs> right. uh, but you had, you had your, your, your twins, I heard, and, and uh, just to, to, to apply this story to twins here, <laughs> you know, if, uh, if, are your twins identical twins? No, uh, uh, but if they were identical twins, then, then, then they would not be quantum entangled in the sense, <laughs> in, the sense, in the sense that their properties are determined by hidden features, namely genes. So you have a causal explanation why twins look identical. If they were quantum entangled, they would not have hidden genes, but would still be identical. So, oh, oh this is for this way, right? <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Muss mein Zeug mitnehmen. I have to carry my stuff with me. Thank you very much. I'm leaving.